All right, it's three o'clock in the morning. What better time to learn about uh, radios? So right now we're gonna be talking about uh, CTCSS and DCS, which stand for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch or Digital Coded Squelch. And if you watch my other video about what squelch is, you'll know that that's uh, uh, basically a, a, cri a filter criteria that we use to decide when or when not to uh, mute or unmute the audio speaker on a radio. Traditional squelch um, operates with signal strength being the criteria. So if you uh, if you have a weak signal, squelch won't open. Your radio stays silent. If you have a strong signal, squelch will open, and you'll you'll hear audio. And if we didn't have squelch at all, then you would constantly hear static. Pretty annoying, because tuned to this frequency, four six two point six eight seven five. There is always something to hear. It just happens to sound like that. So <clears throat> we use uh, we use squelch to not hear uh, unwanted static and only only actually hear audio when there's a an, an active and wanted signal present. Sometimes signal strength based squelch is not enough for your particular application, and uh, you want to add another criteria. And basically what that is, is uh, the radio will send an audi audible or, or it's supposed to be a sub audible tone, but sometimes you can barely hear it coming through um, a tone that uh, doesn't interfere with with your voice conversation, but the radios can hear them uh, with each other. And basically it says, OK, even though there's a sufficient signal strength present and I would normally open the squelch, I'm also now looking for a second criteria, which is this tone. And if I'm listening to and I hear a signal on this frequency, but the tone's not there, I'm going to keep the speaker muted and there's going to be no audio coming through. And so if other users on the particular channel or frequency that you're operating on do not have that tone uh, specified to transmit out of their radios when they talk. Yes, there will be a strong signal present, but your radio is not going to uh, not going to let you hear it because they don't have the right tone set up. Um, now. As far as marketing goes, CTCSS and DCS are commonly referred to and marketed as um, terms like like a privacy code or private line, or you'll you'll hear it referred to as a PL tone, which stands for private line. Private line is an old uh, Motorola term, I believe. Um, these are terrible names. They're completely inaccurate because these these uh, two methods of squelch control do not add any kind of privacy whatsoever. Um, anybody who's monitoring the frequency that you're using can hear whatever you're saying because they don't necessarily have a CTCSS or DCS filter activated. Um, if they're just using carrier squelch, which is the, the traditional squelch, which is signal strength only, as soon as you transmit your signal strong enough, their squelch opens, they can hear you. Um, it's it's really the opposite of privacy is everyone can hear you, but you can't hear everyone. You can only hear them if they also happen to be transmitting the correct subaudible tone. Um, so it's more of a nuisance thing than a privacy thing. It, it's filtering out other signals on that frequency that you don't want to hear because they are not, uh, you know, the specific person that you're trying to talk to and you have both agreed to set the same uh, same tone squelch, you know, code on each of your radios. So it, it really irks me when I see, you know, this stuff get marketed, you know, uh, you'll see it on the, you know, FRS radios that get sold at like sporting goods stores or uh, big box retailers, you know, in addition to the, you know, well, 36 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles of, of range they claim, which is of course not realistic. They also claim we have 38 or 50 or however many uh, privacy codes that will that, that choose from. And they'll, they'll even go a step further and advertise the, you know, uh, 22 channels times 38 or 50 privacy code equals X number of permutations or combinations, you know, X number of channels. And it's, it's BS. It's not true at all. Um, there's only a finite number of channels. And just because you added PL tones or, or CTCSS or DCS tones, doesn't increase the number of channels that you have at your disposal. Um, it's just increases the, the number of combinations of codes you can use to filter out other people uh, that, that you don't want to listen to. So I cannot stress that enough that 
the CTCSS and DCS tones have nothing to do with privacy. And if you buy a radio that says something about privacy tones or privacy codes, don't be fooled. There's no privacy. The only way you get privacy is through encryption. And of course, we can't use encryption on, on these, uh, on these um, radio services. So that said, how does CTCSS and DCS work? All right, radioreference.com. This is a chart showing the standard CTCSS tones. So what we have here is a number, 67.0, 71.9, 74.4, and et cetera. And these numbers refer to the actual literal audio frequency of the tone that is being transmitted. One radio transmits that tone along with its, with its carrier. The other radio is listening for that tone. And uh, if there's no, no tone present or the incorrect tone present, the receiving radio will not open the squelch. And if the correct tone is present, then it will open the squelch. And so that's how you filter out other unwanted users using uh, CT, CSS and DCS. Now, DCS, digital uh, coded squelch, is basically the same principle, but rather than using all of these different audio frequency tones, um, it transmits a, uh, a, a digital stream of data um, and uh, basically that, uh, that digital stream contains a code which the receiving radio listens for much in the same way that the analog CTCSS contains a tone that the receiving radio listens for. So it's basically an analog and a digital version of the same sort of concept, which is I am transmitting an extra piece of information that you are listening for, and if you hear it, then you will open your squelch. All right, so here we have an FRS radio set to CTCSS code 27, which corresponds with a actual tone of 167.9 hertz. And scanner volume is turned down, so we're only using this as a visual display. We're not getting any audio out of it, but we are getting audio out of these two Alfang radios. So <clears throat> they're both set to channel six. I don't know if you can even see those, but it's a BF triple eight and a UV B5, both set to channel six. Now the one on the right is uh, set to um, carrier squelch only, so no tones required to open the squelch on this guy. And this one is set to uh, be open, um, to open the squelch only when a uh, code of 254.1 hertz is detected. So what will happen is when I transmit with this guy, which is what, 167 or whatever it was, the radio on the right, we get audio out of. The radio on the left, we get a green indicator light, but no audio. So here's the audio out of the radio on the right with carrier squelch. And then I'll turn that volume down to demonstrate that here we're transmitting, but no audio because the wrong CTCSS tone is being used. So while this particular radio will alert us, hey, that there is a signal present that normally would be strong enough to, uh, to open the squelch uh, with that indicator light, there's no audio because the other piece of the puzzle is missing, which is that code. Now, if we go ahead and use the monitor key and we would transmit... I don't know if I can do that with two hands, but yeah, I can't, but, uh, or with one hand, but, uh, if we were to hold the monitor key open and then transmit, we would now be bypassing that CTCSS filter. And we would hear the audio because we've manually disengaged all squelch, both the tone squelch and the, and the signal strength based carrier squelch. And uh, we hear everything. Um, so really what CTCSS and DCS, for or for once again, I'll say, 
is uh, is basically filtering out unwanted signals. I, I will stress it again: nothing to do with privacy, um, but they're just a feature for you know. Let's let's say you're at a campground and there's a bunch of little kids running around on you know channel five, and you are trying to talk to your friend on channel five. So you don't want to hear a bunch of little kids who are chattering on the radio. You only want to hear when your friend talks. You guys both pick a CTCSS or DCS code, uh, agree on that, set your radios to it, and then each of your radios will only open up when that code is detected. Um, that's really basically what it's good for. Um, I would just change the channel personally um, because I don't like filtering out potential signals. Um, you know, let's, let's say that you're monitoring, uh, you know, uh, an FRS channel and then somebody's calling for help, uh, theoretically, and you wouldn't hear it because you had CTCSS on, that's a concern. Um, then again, if you're calling for help, you probably shouldn't be using FRS frequencies in the first place. But, uh, you know, I, I suppose it's useful to some people. I've never had use for it, but anyways, hopefully that explains, uh, basically how it works. So I just realized that uh, <clears throat> I've been referring to the usefulness of CTCSS and DCS with regard to simplex radios, but uh, I haven't mentioned repeaters yet. So this is actually where they're really useful, um, both in amateur radio repeaters and also uh, business um, and public safety repeaters. And the benefit of being able to filter out unwanted signals means that if you have a repeater somewhere, um, you only want intentional transmissions to be able to key up that repeater. So <clears throat> what that means is that, uh, you know, a repeater is typically more powerful than a, than a handheld radio, and it's also gonna be in higher elevation um, than a handheld radio. So it's gonna have much better coverage than a handheld, handheld radio. Um, and what that means is that if you're gonna be blasting a radio signal uh, from an elevated position over a wide geographic area, you only want that to happen when it's intentional. So adding that second criteria um, of, uh, of tone codes um, is some basically some cheap insurance that your repeater is not going to be accidentally keyed up and, and blasting you know radio signals um, that are not intentional. So um, looking at this particular ham radio repeater on uh, repeaterbook.com, we immediately see some information about it. One is the frequency and then the plus offset, which is another conversation. And then right below that, you'll see that uh, tone in and tone out. So tone in means that a CTCSS tone of 103.5 hertz is required to activate or key up this repeater. And then also the tone out means simply that this repeater happens to be programmed to when it transmits its repeating signal to also encode that transmission with a 103.5 uh, CTCSS tone. So, and I've already identified before I started recording, um, we can let's see here, we can key up here on this and there we get a kickback from the repeater. So, what that means is that when I programmed this radio and I programmed this repeater in, I made sure to program in the radio to transmit a code, a tone code of 103.5. Now, if I turned that, that tone off, which I think I could do, uh, 3.5 and let's just set that to the wrong tone for example right so now when I transmit no kickback that repeater is hearing the transmission that I'm sending but because the uh, the incorrect tone is being sent oops there we go because the incorrect tone is being sent that repeater is not going to key up it's not going to kick back it's not going to accept, accept the transmission that I just sent it, and it's certainly not going to repeat it out because it uh, possessed the incorrect tone code. But go ahead and 
Oops, no, I don't want DCS. Go ahead and set that back to 103.5. And when I transmit again, we have a successful kickback. So that's really useful. And public safety does this too, you know, law enforcement, fire, medical. Um, they'll, they'll use uh, uh, PL tone. And that's, that's the other thing I was talking about privacy. In the ham radio, amateur radio world, these are really commonly referred to as PL tones, even though that's technically incorrect because, again, they don't provide you with any privacy. Um, but when you hear, hear hams talk about PL tones, that's what they're talking about is CTCSS or DCS tones or codes. Um, but uh, it's it's really good cheap insurance to make sure that your repeater doesn't accidentally blast all over the place um, unintentionally and that only an, in, an intentionally programmed radio that is transmitting will uh, will keep that repeater. Now, some repeaters do just operate on carrier squelch only, and so you'll see, you know, listed here, it'll just say uh, what, CSQ, I think, or something like that for carrier squelch. And uh, and that's fine. That's the, at the discretion of the repeater owner um, to how they want to set their repeater up. But for, at least for amateur radio, most repeaters, and I think uh, public safety too, most repeaters will employ uh, some sort of uh, CT, CSS, or DCS um, access tone uh, to make sure that only only intentional signals are being used or are being repeated. Um, so um, that's uh, that's how CT, CSS, and DCS would be applied in uh, repeater operation.